I'm Nick Sanders. This is Video Deconstructed. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create proxies, how they're useful when you're doing remote editing, and how to avoid some of the problems that you can run into if you make them the wrong way. Okay, for this example project, we have a folder of clips that are all 4K files. Uh, we've got 10 clips we're going to use just, just as an example. And I've got them in a folder called original. We're going to make a folder for the proxy files. And let's say uh, we've been given a LUT by the DP. And let's say this project is for Nissan. I just grabbed this off the web. So let's bring our files into Premiere and take a look at the frame rate, which we see is all the clips are at 23,976. And then if we scroll over, we can see that yes, they are 4K files. And one of the great things about working in Premiere is you can edit with the raw files. We could bring these into a sequence and start editing right away. But in this case, we're going to create some proxy files so that we can edit faster. And maybe this is a massive edit and you need to send the proxy files out to numerous editors that are gonna work on different parts of the project. So we're gonna go over into Media Encoder and we can take our original clips, drop them in there. And this is defaulted to match source high bit rate, which is fine. And we're gonna customize that to add a few extras on that you might be asked to do for a client. One thing to keep in mind is that, remember, as we saw in Premiere, these movie files are 23,976, and the resolution is 4096 by 2160. We wanna keep that exactly the same when we make these proxy files. We also wanna keep the name the same, dot move, at the end for the original files and then the proxy files will have a .mp4 extension which is fine. The important thing is to keep the name the same. So we're going to head back over into Media Encoder. If that doesn't say that you can click on one of these movies, Command A or Control A on a PC to select all and then you can change all of these files all at once. So right now it's on H.264. If you did not see that, you could click here and select H.264. And once you did that, if it did not default to match source high bit rate, you can click here. And you'll notice that if I were to change this to high quality, all of them will change. Okay, so we have our all of our files set to be H.264 and match source high bit rate. Then what we wanna do is click on, we have all of these selected. I'm gonna click on just the top one and it's letting me know you are about to edit encoding settings, multiple outputs. The settings of all selected outputs will be replaced. Do you want to continue? That is what we wanna do. If you look under the video column, you can see the width and the height. The resolution is 4096 by 2160 and the frame rate is 23976. Now in this particular example, all of my movie files are exactly the same. There's a good chance that if you're working on a large project, you're gonna have camera footage from different cameras. Now hopefully all of your footage has the same frame rate, but there's a good chance you might have a few different resolutions mixed in and that's why you wanna make sure that you're setting your proxy files up to match source so they have the same frame rate and the same resolution so that they match back to the original. The audio can be AAC, that's fine. And what we're gonna do to customize this a little bit is we're gonna add some of these effects that you can put into the proxy. You don't have to do this, but in certain cases, your post producer, the client, somebody might want you to add some of these options in. So we're just gonna look at three of them. And the first one, very commonly, you're going to have footage that was shot in log. And if you select this LUT option, you can either select one of the LUTs that are in here. In our case, we received a LUT from the DP. So we're gonna to navigate to our folder where we have this LUT file and we can apply that. 
And you can see that when I applied the LUT, the image changed, but it still says none here where I've chosen the LUT. I'm guessing that's a bug in Premiere Pro. I don't know, but it does work and the LUT does get applied when you export your proxies. So now all the proxy files will have the LUT applied to it. We're also going to, let's say that the, let's say that we want to add the client's logo baked into the bottom corner, a little bug. You can choose a file and we can place that. Let's say we want it in the bottom corner and bring the opacity down. And you can also move it over a little further if you want. The next thing we're gonna add is this name overlay. And you can see when I clicked on it right up here, the name of the movie file is being added and you can place that wherever you want. We'll put this down at the bottom left. And then let's say that we want to add the time code as well. So now each clip will have these baked in to the proxy file. So we've just added these four effects onto each proxy file that we're gonna create. And now if I go up here, I can save this preset. And now the name is up there. And when I hit OK, you'll see all of these change. And just keep in mind, if you have a lot of movie files loaded in here, it could take a while for them to change. I'm speeding it up here in the editing. And now the preset that I just created is in the list. It'll always be up at the top of the list, and you might have to scroll up to see it. The last thing I want to do is choose where this is going to go. And again, if you have all of these selected, you can click on the output file and we want to put them all into this proxy folder. And I'm just gonna double check that, yes, if you click on a few of them, you can make sure that you're going to the right spot. And then we can let it rip. So in an ideal situation, you can be setting this up at night so you can let it run overnight and have it ready the next day. Okay, all of our proxy files have been created. All of these are our original files, .move files. These are the proxies, .mp4s. If I were to open this file, you're gonna see that we've got the baked in name of the movie file. We've got the time code, we got the client logo baked in, and we have a, a LUT applied. So what we're gonna do is go back into Premiere and we are not going to bring the proxy files in here. We're actually going to attach them to these original files. So I'm gonna select all of my original files, right click on one of them. When you go to proxy, you're gonna see that you can attach proxies right here. You also have this create proxies. And you can see that I can choose the proxy settings and it'll even put it right next to the original in a proxy folder. So this is another way to create your proxies. I prefer to do it through Media Encoder where you have a little more control. So this is just a personal preference, but you can do it through here. What we're gonna do though is right click on our media, attach proxies. So when your attach proxies window opens, make sure you pay attention here to your match file properties. Remember, I made it a point to keep the file name the same, but our extension has changed. You don't wanna turn that on because the extensions won't match. And the media start and tape name should be the same, but if you just check media file name, which should be the default, and then you want to relink others automatically and use media browser to attach files, these defaults are most likely what you're gonna want. I'm going to click on attach and we're gonna navigate to the proxy folder right here. And you can see up here, it says the movie file is C004. That's this one right here. Okay. And it should attach all of them. And if you right click up here in your metadata columns, go to metadata display, open up this first drop down menu, and then scroll down. And you've got proxy file path, proxy media file. And then here you have proxy. So you can turn all of those on. If I hit okay, now when I scroll over, you can see under proxy, it says attached. So that gives you that 
layer of confidence that you have set things up correctly and then you've got the file path here as well. So if you remember, our movie files are 4K files. Let's say for this example, we're editing a 1080 project. So I'm gonna create a new sequence and we'll just grab a 1080p 2398 project. And I'm just gonna drop all of these movies in here. I'm not going to change, I'm gonna keep the existing settings. So right now, this, we're, we're zoomed in on this clip. And if I select them all, I can right click and we'll just uh, set to frame size. I know that we're looking at the original clip because I don't see the baked in logo. I don't see the time code, the, the name of the file. And what you're gonna wanna do is add the toggle proxies icon to your toolbar here. And you can do that by clicking on the button editor and look for this logo right here, toggle proxies. And it can be confusing. It looks like this comparison view. You can recognize it by the arrows going from one to the other. So now if I click on this, it'll turn blue and you can see we've got the LUT added, we've got the file name, the time code and the client logo baked in. And that switches everything. All the files have been switched over. And then I can go right back with a click of the button. So that way you can check if, uh, if something is in focus, you might not be able to tell when you're looking at a proxy. Uh, it's nice to be able to go to the originals. I recently worked on a project where they shot everything in Los Angeles. I was gonna be editing in Portland. They needed to get the files to me quickly. So they took the large files, made proxy files, which are gonna be smaller. I was able to download them over the internet quickly and easily and start editing. And then they were able to send me the huge files, the original footage on a hard drive. And I got that a few days later. So it was sort of a reverse of what we just did. You might run into the exact same situation. So in this case, I'm going to import the proxy files first. Let's imagine that I do not have the originals. I download these over the internet. And I'll just say that this is my edit. You can see these are the proxy files. And notice when I click on this toggle proxies, it's not gonna do anything because these are not connected. If I scroll over here to that column that we were looking at, proxy, so there's nothing happening there. And notice that all of these files here say .mp4. So after we do this process, you're gonna see that they automatically switch over to .move because we're going to be connecting the full res media right click, go back down to proxy, and you're gonna say reconnect full res media. Go to attach and navigate to the original clips. So we're basically doing the same thing, but instead of saying attach, we're saying reconnect full res media, hit okay. And now when we go over to our proxy column, We've got attached and notice here it says dot move, whereas before it said dot MP4. Now, if I look up here in the window, we can see that we've got the, it's definitely looking at the proxy footage with the logo and the time code. And then if I turn off the toggle proxies, there's our original footage. So now our edit is seeing the original footage and we can toggle back and forth. So one thing you might wanna do is rename your folder over here. In this particular example, I had called the folder proxy that had all the proxy files in it. And now, it, you know, as you switch back and forth, these names don't change. So if you just generically call your folder video or something else footage, it won't confuse you later on or somebody else who might be working on the project as well. So remember I told you that you wanna make sure you keep your frame rate and your resolution the same when you go to make your proxies. The proxy file should have the same resolution and the same frame rate as your original movies. And I'm gonna show you an example of some of the problems you can run into if you don't adhere to that advice. Let's just take one of these movies. 
So remember, these files in this example are 4096 by 2160. And in our example, we're making an edit that's going to be 1920 by 1080. So if you were to make the mistake of not matching the source, let's say you assume, well, since I'm making a 1080p file, that's my final output, I'll just make the proxies 1920 by 1080. For this example, I'm just gonna add the name overlay and we'll just put that in the middle just so we can easily identify the proxy file from the original. And I'll put this just in the root level. So let's imagine the same scenario where you've downloaded proxy movie files to edit with and you're working on them for a few days before you get the original movies. So I import this proxy movie. And remember, we know that the edit is gonna be 1920 by 1080. So we'll just start our sequence 1920 by 1080. And let's imagine we drag this in and we know that this is the proxy. We've got the baked in name there. And let's say you wanted to scale this up. If you go up here to the effects control, we're scaled at 100%. So let's say you scale this up to 150%. And just to make this real easy, I'm gonna put the position of this so that we have this black here on the top and the left side. And then I can take a picture of this. So now I'll drag that out here to hold on to. And let's say you've done editing for two days, three days, then the original files get sent to you on a hard drive and you're gonna connect them. So we'll do the same thing we did before. This is our proxy file, the .mp4 file. I'm gonna right click. And remember, we're gonna reconnect full res media attach and the original we're, we're looking for the number nine file go to original and here it is here hit okay and now notice it's become a dot move file and if we scroll over to that proxy column it does say attached but right now we're looking at the photo i've dragged the photo into the timeline here that uh that we took a picture of but when we go over here this is our edit and that does not look correct. That's what it's supposed to look like. And if we click over here on our toggle proxy, the proxy comes on, but it's in the wrong position. So what's happening is the position and scale that we applied to the 1920 by 1080 proxy is being applied to a much larger file this file here that's 4096 by 2160. So hopefully that will help you understand why you wanna make sure your resolution matches between your proxy and your original files. I also mentioned the frame rate. I won't go into an example of that, but you can imagine if you have original footage at 2398 and you accidentally make it 25 or 2997, the speed of your video is gonna be different. And then when you switch back from proxy to original, it's just not gonna match up and you're gonna have all kinds of problems. Thank you for checking out this tutorial. Please subscribe and like it if you like it. Let me know if you have had any proxy creating nightmares in the comments below.